welcome to the Four M's podcast. I am, uh, we are your hosts, Professor Barry and Dornella Waterton, and uh, representatives of the Great Lincoln University, courtesy of the Chapel and Student Health and Wellness. And uh, we are here to talk about whatever we want to talk about, whatever affects us and affects you. So let's just get into it, my sister. So, okay, um, we're going to recap the Bible study. So we went through sixteen, Job 16 to, through 18 this week. And um, did you get a chance to check out the video? No. Okay. So um, anyway, Job 16 through 18, um, you know, it was just more of Job lamenting. Um, he called his friends useless <laughs> uh, and told them, you know, basically they were like terrible friends. I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he said. And then um, he went on and started talking to God again. And then his friend Bilal decided to talk about, talk to him a second time. And of course, he came at him, disrespected him and so forth and so on. And then Job had to clap back. And so... <laughs> And then he went back to talking to God. Um, but this time, Job focused a lot on uh, wanting to be dead. And uh, so we're so grateful that he did not die. Um, because then we would not have this story to look to when we are having tough times. Um, so that was pretty much it in the eggshell. And anybody who wants to check it out, the video is on all the social media platforms and feel free to check it out. Um, <clears throat> on Instagram, uh, CM Productions, and as well as on um, YouTube. So, Ms. Waterton, we're going to shift gears and we're going to talk about what is going on right now. Well, a protest for justice is going on right now. Mm. Right. So, what would you, I mean, like, let's just get into it. Like, with with this protest is different. One thing I like, uh, one thing I kind of like is that it's not just, not just one race came out, but different mm. races came out, and like they finally, people are finally seeing like they have power, so they're coming mm-hmm. out and help too. Right. So I feel like this is what we've been missing. So now right. they now they speeding up things more or trying mm-hmm. more because they're seeing it's not just it's not just black or African Americans alone. Right. Seeing this thing going on now, the world is seeing it. Right, right. Um, I heard one commentator say that the uh, power of the civil rights movement was television. So for years, black people have been saying this ain't right. They have been fighting against it. They have been protesting, so forth and so on. But then television got invented, and then the world could actually see the images of peaceful black people walking and marching and dogs being sicked on them and hoses being turned on them and and the uh, officers beating them. And so the world was outraged. Well, now we have social media. And social media has allowed the world to once again witness um, the destruction and 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 the murder and the evil and wickedness, you know, uh, of all these attacks. Black people. Um, well, the the one murder of Mr. George Flood, Floyd, and it was so horrific. And I, you know, I still like I just wish they would stop showing it. For one, like we get it, mm-hmm. we've all seen it. You don't have to keep showing this man's face as he's lying on the ground. You don't have to keep doing that. Um, and but because of social media, the power of social media, 
the world once again has witnessed these horrors. And like, um, I think it was Friday or yesterday, one of the two, Berlin had uh, all these people had gathered and they were just clapping and shouting Black Lives Matter, Black Lives yeah. Matter in yeah, Berlin. They're in different countries and, now. Mm-hmm. Start protesting. Mm-hmm. And so it's such a blessing. Um, You know, now what do you think about the fact that it has seemingly, seemingly devolved into all of this... Um, destruction um well uh, well for the the destruction part like they didn't have to do that but then again people already was frustrated and taking out all the anger Mm -hmm. on you know like so can't control the anger so the anger is just being taken out on anything and everything yeah now what's so crazy is um so the target in uh did you just No, leave? I just left. <laughs> okay. Uh okay. The target in um Minnesota in, in Minneapolis. The reason why that originally got trashed is because um when the people had gotten tear gas and the only thing that stops the action of the gas is milk. Yeah. Right? So when the people went into Target to buy milk to wash their eyes out, then all of a sudden the management or whatever of that Target refused to sell them milk. Mm. They weren't going in there asking for free milk. They wanted to purchase milk and they refused to sell it to them. So while these like people are out there suffering their eyes are burning out of their head because the tear gas is a serious thing you won't sell them what they need in order to stop the pain and so the people snap another thing very interesting that i started noticing um and somebody took the time to put together a whole bunch of video clips showing it is that there were these um white people, men and women, dressed in all black, with their faces covered, um, who you can tell were organized, part of an organization. And they um, they were the ones who were destroying yes, everything. Who were... Yeah. And so, at that point, then it's not, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter that's destroying things it's them and you know i was glad that they were able to catch it on video and they were um different instances where the black people were calling them out for it because the black people were getting blamed for everything like oh you know they are thugs and they're this and they're that and it that's not who they are that's not what they Mm -hmm. came for you know they didn't come to do all of that um and yeah, that was deep because I have seen those people who look like that, dressed like that, you know, and do that level of destruction in video clips from, you know, protests in different parts of the world. And, um, you know, they don't know who it was, but they say, you know, some people said it was Antifa. Some people said it was um, MAGA demonstrators. Um and so these people were only there to basically, uh, if it was MAGA, we know that they were there to discredit Black Lives Matter, um, to make them look bad. Um, if it was Antifa, they have their own agenda, you know, so, but they just use whatever protesters are already going on, join up with them, make it seem like they're part of their uh you know, their protests or their um, yeah, 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 their cause. They support their cause when in actuality they don't. Like in one of the video clips that I saw, um, the young lady was spray painting BLM on the wall, and she got confronted by one of the Black Lives Matter mm. members. 
And the girl said, why are you doing that? Stop doing it. That's not what we do. And she said, a black person asked me to do this. And it was two of them together. And a black person asked us to do this. And she said, no, no, they didn't. What black person? Because, see, I'm Black Lives Matter. You all are not. And, see, you're destroying the property, but we're going to get blamed for it. And, yeah. And then they just hurried up and walked off. And they were very careful not to let their mask drop. And, you know, it was just so many different things because they showed up with wrenches and tire irons and chains. In one video, I saw somebody with a chainsaw. Yeah, hammers and stuff. First of all, (laughs) right. Like, black people, let's just be real clear. We're not wasting money (laughs) buying a chainsaw. Like, that's not what we do. It's not what we do. Uh, we're not wasting money buying yeah. spray paint to go to a protest. It's not what we do. So, yeah, that was deep. I don't know. The the protest here yeah, did kind of get a lot out of hand with the burnings and stuff. But mm. yeah, you when you said that was very right. Like, we don't go out get spray paint, paint like, no. Yeah, it's not what we do. And so, yeah, it was starting to feel very weird. And um, so all the police commissioners and mayors, they, and and the governors, they caught on very early that it wasn't the same group. Like, the group that would start the protest were us, the Black Lives Matter, and were the legitimate folks. The ones that would start trashing everything, um, later on in the uh, late afternoon, early evening, that's mm-hmm. when they started. Um, they were not. They were not us. They were the other group, and they started catching on to that. Even to the point that um, Attorney Barr said that quite a few folks that had been arrested were from different states, and so what they were going to do is um, they turned it into a federal crime mm-hmm. to do that to go across state lines and participate in a protest and get arrested. Um, They called it some kind of something. I forgot what they called it, but it represented like agitation, Mm -hmm. agitators. And so for those folks who got, you know, convicted of that, it became a federal crime and you would do some real federal time, like a felony. I'm like, wow. Right. But, I mean, the level of their destruction was that of a felony, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, they destroyed a lot of places. See, some people, private, some things I didn't like is like, okay, they destroyed the police car, right? They're trying to say that they're maintaining the police, right? But then they start destroying, like, private properties, like, private people, cars, and stuff like that. So then you see... Like it's not they're not really focused or who said was doing it right? It's not really focused on police mm-hmm. brutality, right? Because because they had yeah. their own agenda, so they didn't. They were just pretending to be a part of that in order to blend yeah. in with the crowd. But it was never for them. It was never about the police brutality. Now, some interesting turn of events. Jay Z called the governor of Missouri mm. this morning and told him, um, "Yeah, things have got to change. Uh, the injustice, the uh, uh, you know, all of that has to change. But it seems that you, the good people of Missouri, are those who want to change. Um, they want things to be different." And so you just got to, you know, follow through and you got to um, mm-hmm. finish it up. Like they have to be convicted of a crime, convicted of their crime. Yeah, and, um, and not just that one police, the all the ones that witness, Mm-mm. they're also supposed to be mm-hmm. behind bars. Definitely. Well, see, um, there was one camera angle that showed. It, not only were they witnesses, they were actually accomplices because they were holding him down. 
behind the a police van. They were holding okay. down his leg. That's why he w- couldn't kick himself okay. free. Well, they are accomplices. They were mm-hmm. all exactly. of them. There's like they showed a picture of the sentence. The one man, right? They charged. They him, charged. Mm-hmm. But then I don't know. Some people mm-hmm. like they put together the picture with the picture and it looked like a diff- whole different person so I don't even know if they charged the right person yeah uh, they said that instead of using his mugshot they just um they used like a picture of him during his rookie see, days or whatever sense. when <laughs> no it does not make it sense. sounds like he, they maybe not. had somebody already and they show him or they just locked up somebody young and look like him because that part, that young picture does not look like him. It it kind of resembles him. Yeah. No, like, it doesn't make sense to use somebody younger picture. Like you know. Yeah, it it it's just sad. Yeah. And I believe that and that is another thing getting people more even more wilder. Like y'all are hiding things that. He can't even hide no more because it doesn't make sense no more. Right. And, you know, they they weren't going to even lock him up. But the uh, attorney, gen- the medical, the attorney over there, the AD, di- the district attorney, rather, he, the only reason why he charged him is because the governor told him that he expected charges to come. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't going to charge him. And that was another reason why the people in uh, Minneapolis erupted because they were like, you know, this kind of stuff will always happen. Like that particular officer had, what, 18, 19 uh, accusations and complaints against him. And that was the first one that he ever got um, charged with a crime from. And only one out of all the ones, all, all of the complaints, only one did he get a reprimand and something put into his mm-hmm. record. So, you know, he was always a problem. However, what they would do is they would, um, if the police did something wrong to a citizen, like hurt or killed them or whatever, then when it was time for the medical examiner to examine them and come up with a cause of death, they would come up with something else other than what really caused it. And then that's how um, that's how they would get off. Well, this time they came up with a lame excuse saying that, uh, you know, asphyxiation wasn't the only, wasn't the uh, reason why he died. Mm-hmm. Like, don't believe your lying eyes. That's basically what they're nah, telling because, them. Because, uh-uh. You tell me if somebody go on anybody right. neck, like, anybody neck for that amount of period, that long period, that something will happen. Right. Right. It only takes, it only takes seven minutes to choke somebody to death. Um, and he know so, what he was doing. And we've learned that. Yeah, and we've learned that when we were, um, you know, when you take uh, safety and awareness classes mm-hmm. and self-defense, you learn that um, it only takes seven minutes to die. So that's why they tell you, don't let nobody put their hands around your neck. And if they do, they show you specific moves in order to get those hands off your mm-hmm. neck because of the simple fact that, um, you know, it only takes seven minutes for you to get choked to death. So with that being the case, how in the world... Are you now going to say he had his knee on his neck for nine whole minutes and that's not what caused him to die? I know it's sad. Even when he was not breathing, he still had his knee on his neck. Right. Because he wanted to make sure he was dead. Like the man did not move. So why are you still holding him down? and, And he was grinding it back and forth and moving his knee back and forth because... And he was holding him down and he was doing that because he wanted to make sure he, he was dead. He wanted to make sure of it. He murdered him and it what what made it so bad is it seemed he got pleasure yeah. out of it. Like in his eyes was like an evil glee. You know what I mean? Like a gleeful, like evil 
happiness. Like, yeah, I'm killing yeah. them. Well, yeah. you see, we don't know, like, what it, like, if he had it out for this man, you know, like, because, mm-hmm. um, I see, well, the, his wife, the white man wife, they already mm-hmm. put up the internet, put up his wife. His wife is related to the same cop that was blocking everybody, too. Oh, yes. stop it. You must look it up. They already put up his whole address. Everything is online. So his wife is mm. the, I think, the Asian kind of looking cop. Yeah, I've seen her. Yeah. yeah. She she was, she's a real person. So, and, um, yeah, and that guy was Asian looking. That was blocking everybody. That's his brother. And, um, wow. Oh, I didn't and, know that. That thickens the plot. Thickens. Yeah, and Floyd used to work. And that, they said Floyd used to work like um somewhere in the club or something, and they used to be outside at a restaurant. Some, yeah, something, and they used to be outside. So mm-hmm. yeah, they worked at the restaurant together yeah. um as bouncers. Yeah, for seventeen years. Mm-hmm. And then um they said that uh he um the the restaurant owner said that he would come out there and he was quick to pepper spray everybody she was like i mean as soon as it was like a crowd forming or the slightest hint of a disturbance there didn't even have to be a full on disturbance the slightest hint then um they were coming out there oh man they even broke into a store they were coming out there um he would come out there and just pepper spray everybody. But this, this sad. And what is another thing that is sad is that the three police or whoever was holding them down, right? Just watch, mm-hmm. like, just mm-hmm. watch that man hold you down. How you and your right conscious, like, I don't understand that at all. Just watching that kill somebody yeah, that, for no reason. Yeah, that's just it. They watching and mm-hmm. helping. But then you see, they could do that because they expect not to get any penalty. Right. And they were used to not getting pen- yeah. penalized. So this is what got changed. This is what got stopped. So I guess that's why that's why so much people um protesting and trying to mm-hmm. change this thing because they're not listening. They're not listening if you don't stand up for your rights. Right, right. Um, this one young lady. Um, you know, I I felt her. She was, oh, she was intense. I don't know what this why you come on while I'm driving. She was intense, and um, she was like, yeah. Uh, she was like, yeah. They said, why are you guys doing this? And she was like, because we're tired. We're tired of this, and we're tired of that, right? And so then, um, and she was like, I'm hurting. Like, why are they killing us, you know? And so, anyway, um, the reporter was like, well, aren't you afraid? She was like, afraid of what? What are they going to do, kill us? Mm-hmm. They already are killing us, So, so what? So I'm gonna keep on riding with my people. So whatever you do, you do. Yeah. I said, wow. And so it's like it's a different. Yeah. That. That. Wait. So 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 while we're recording, okay, let me just be a little transparent. While we're recording, I'm driving to pick up my uh, oldest daughter, okay. right? And I had to ride by. Um, I, she works in Port Richmond, and so I had to just. What are you doing? I had to just ride by um, Richmond and uh, what is that? Caster and um, I think it's Aramingo or something. And girl, why somebody broke into the Snipes, the sneaker store? Like r- the whole thing. Like now this is far away from uh, Center City. And stole like all these sneakers and stashed them out in the back like yo now these these is folks that's just taking yeah. advantage like they're not even it's no the protest over here because this is the pw this is the low income area for the 
<laughs> Caucasians. It's not. This is not nothing. You yeah. know what I mean? Wow. And then this, and then this sucks that. because people are trying to make a change and they change in the focus. Mm-hmm. Right. And so when they do that, what happens is then whenever like you're gonna they're gonna mess up the ability for us to um organize yes. and protest. Because we're we're gonna have to come up with like some kind of um safety words and or something that would sh- indicate you know if a person is with the organization or not and if they not then they're gonna have to like run them off or make mm-hmm. them leave did you see that they had undercover cops oh in the yeah protest? wearing yeah, white bands I know that. Mm-hmm. they had the, like the um the thing on the ears so you kind of see some of them yeah. Mm. Yeah, but like that, that, uh, that's understandable. Like I know they certain cities. I know they would have done put on the mm-hmm. cover cops. You know. Mm-hmm. So that's why you always gotta be, also be careful, and and not just go there with intention to burn nothing. You never know who's mm. behind you. <laughs> Right, but again, like the Black Lives Matter people, they weren't there doing any of that, so they didn't have anything to worry about. It was the other folk, and um, when the people got arrested in Minneapolis, the mayor um, said everybody that they had arrested on Tuesday night, I think it was like Mm -hmm. 20 people or so, he said everybody, every single last one of them were from, were not from that state. Mm -hmm. Mm. So that tells you too. They're agitators, you know. They have nothing to do you with. See, the but movement. I didn't see that coming over news as much. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh no, they they don't. They weren't talking about it a whole lot because, you know, the agenda. What they want to do is they want to discredit yeah. the organization. Yeah. And so, if I can, if they can discredit the organization. Then you know. Mm, that, that's why they only show you certain things, certain parts. So you really gotta do your own research mm-hmm. about these things, man. And then, right. This, this no, but this thing was really sad because when I first saw it, right, I did not see the whole video. I only saw like half of it. So in my mind, he was still alive. Right. So I run in my room mm. and prayed that he get released. And then when I found out the whole video, I was so mad. Yeah, it was very sad, yes. very heartbreaking. So I I never seen anything so horrendous in all my life. And it was like, you know, like you just kept your he that man just kept his knee there until he drained the life. Until he felt the life leave the body. Yeah, the and scene. then was was another thing is that it br- it brought up hurt. What what, what I'm saying like everybody mm-hmm. that was even anywhere, the police have harmed them. That that hurt came mm-hmm. back to them after seeing that video. Cause um my dad, mm-hmm. right? Like I could tell when he was telling mm. he, after he watched the video, he told his told told us his story about what happened with him and the cops, right? And you could tell it in his voice how the heart came up. So I could imagine for all the years, all these people, all these black men, that black men and women that went through stuff with the police, all that heart came up again and rose. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and so. Here, another thing is he didn't care about it being public. Like, he didn't care. He knew he was being vi- being videotaped, and he didn't care. He looked right at the cell phone camera and kept going. And so what it reminded me of is, you know, there was a time in American history where they did public lynchings, where they would publicly hang yeah. Black men. And they would have picnics and everything all around the dead body. 
And so it almost seemed as if what he was doing was trying to transport us back to that time. But we're not going back. I feel like, and then right. how it, like, you know how tall Floyd was, was heavy, how masculine he was, right? And the reason he chose, mm-hmm. like, like how he chose such a big masculine person and he looked you right in the face. It's like, it's like basically mm-hmm. showing, trying to show his authority over anybody. Cause look at, it could be a little piece, little body. And he's showing you his authority, like how they used to show back in the day. How they used to shame, mm-hmm. like try to shame or the the males. Mm-hmm. Like, break yes, break them publicly. To bring down them mm-hmm. like, I don't know what to say, bring down their masculinity or something like that. Yeah, and, and their, their power, power yes. and their strength and so in that yeah. video that's mm-hmm. what I was seeing. He was trying to do. Cause like like mm-hmm. like the um the interviewer the his friend was saying Nobody, nobody cries for their mother unless they really, mm-hmm. really in trouble. Right. And this guy's mom had been dead for two years. So that lets you know he knew he was yes. about to die. He didn't cry for his kids, wife, nothing, his mama. Mm-hmm. Well, but right. Yeah. So they need to do something, man. They yeah. really need to do something because stuff like this, like, is really, really things that happen every day. It's hurtful. Day. Yeah. Right. It's hurtful, and um, and and it's sad, and you know, people don't deserve that. Yeah. You know, but um, like I said, you know. Young people, your generation, (laughs) y'all different. (laughs) And so that's what they were not banking on. They thought that this was going to be, you know, they, the, the officer and those he, um, and those folks that he runs with, because, you know, he has to run with the white supremacist organization. Um, they thought this was going to be just easy peasy, like you do something wicked like that, and so what? They did not bank on all of this that's come mm-hmm. that has come with it. And so, so many people were like trying to get the leaders to appeal to the young people and get them to stop and talk to them and blah blah blah. And the young people were not listening, don't care, you know what I mean? <laughs> was like. Yeah, whatever, right? And here's the thing. I, I just feel like, you know, that's what they get. And when the young lady, Tamika Mallory, got up there on that podium and said, we learned violence from watching y'all. This is what y'all gave us. When she said that, I got mm-hmm. chills because that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so with that, you know, it's no way around it. Like you all, you know, from watching how police and um, different people in leadership inflict violence and discrimination and mistreatment of black people year after year after year. Now, now you got a generation that don't care. Yeah. Don't care. We so can eat, but, well, what's them it, right? The foundation, either way, they're going to kill us. So. At least mm-hmm. we stand up for our rights. Like, at least we could change something for the next generation. I feel that's this was in their minds. Like, mm-hmm. and um, but what so uh, what I did say, what I can say that I really appreciated was you had law enforcement from many different um, from the different states. You had people in power like the governor and the mayor and uh, the commissioner of the state troopers in Missouri. You had different uh, people that were speaking out, that were walking with the protesters, um, and they were officers in uniforms. And they was like, "No, we're walking with you. We're 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 not. You know, we're with you. We we saw the same thing. We saw a murder, and so we're yeah, in support of what's going on. I, I heard Jersey we're in support too. of you." 
Yeah. Jersey was like, hey, that was a murder. I mean, everybody, you know, and that, I appreciated that. And so, like I said, the governor, um, the language that they were using, because I've been, you know, growing up and being of my generation, we've been trained to hear buzzwords. So we've been trained to hear the buzzwords that are said in order for the white supremacists and white nationalist organizations to know that, you know, that particular person is on their side. And that's not the language that they were using Mm -hmm. at all. At all. They were disgusted by it and they knew that it wasn't the Black Lives Matter protesters. They knew who it was. Um, And I appreciated that. They were not trying to talk tough to them. Even though they were like, yeah, we need for this to calm down, they weren't Mm -hmm. tough talking. And so, yeah, all the way around, it was a blessing. Um, I just be glad when they actually separate it out and see who, you know, who was the ones actually destroying stuff. Now, you did have some black people. They weren't part of the movement either. They took advantage of the situation and ran into some of these stores and stealing clothes yeah. and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's nothing we can do about that. But yeah. Well, girly, um, I'm just so glad that you're staying safe. (laughs) So, okay, well, we're going to wrap our conversation. And um, so is there anything you would like to say to the listening audience uh, before we go? Um, continue to stand up for your rights and do it in peace. Yeah, do it in peace. Because as a um, because as a a a, a sophomore in college, let me just ask you this really quickly before we uh, disconnect. How does it make you feel that all this is going on? And a pandemic, you know, during a whole pandemic in your lifetime. Like, this is history. Like, you know, it will be in the book. How does it make you feel? Um, um, right now, it's not really, not really impacting until I believe it will make me feel better if we actually accomplish something through this hard time. So, okay. if Amen. police brutality, if they finally open their eyes and holding them accountable, holding them then accountable. I would say during this pandemic, something changed and we did not mm-hmm. go through this time in vain. Amen. That's right. Okay, my sister, we're going to leave on that note. That's a strong one. Uh, we will be back next week. Please, everyone. Uh, this is Professor Barry and Ms. Darnella Waterton. That's right. And we are uh, the hosts and co-hosts of 4M's podcast, uh, courtesy of Lincoln University Student Health and Wellness Division. And, um, and so, therefore, we will be back next week to chat. And until then, please stay safe. Um, and, you know, fight for your rights, but do it responsibly and safely. We're going to pray out and then we're going to go ahead and sign off. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this time together. We thank you for allowing us to have this discussion and have a platform to, you know, share our thoughts and our opinions and our points of view on such um, a strong and serious topic. Uh, We ask that you have your way with the family and the loved ones of Mr. Floyd, because as so many things are happening in his name, they still are dealing with the fact that he is never coming home again and they had to watch him be murdered. And so we know that that's painful. We ask that you just have your way. Send forth your healing and comforting touch. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, my sister, we will chat.